Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and today you're going to learn about three steps on how you find love and I'm going to show you if you stay till the end awesome sales techniques that you can use in your daily life as well as in your professional lives. So let's go. Today, my name is Dashan Devendran and I'm going to share with you how to find love in three simple steps. Now, I must warn you, it's going to be a controversial idea. But if you stay at the end, you get to watch a video where I use these techniques in my own speech. So stay tuned. Law of averages. Now, what is the law of averages? Basically, it's a very simple tool where there are just three steps where you categorize people into category A, B, and C. And you can break them down into the 33% of cold lead where the situation ends in a no. Or category number two, warm lead of 33% where the situation ends in a maybe. And the final category, 33% hot lead where the situation ends in a yes. Now, you can use this in many approaches in life. Most often, people use them in sales. When people want to go and meet a client, when they want to pitch a product or a service or some sort of program to a client, they always use the law of averages. And in this video, you will also get to see how I took a very cheeky turn on the law of averages in three steps to approaching someone. And these three steps, it could be for the girl or guy of your dreams or the client that you want to close or even that promotion that you want to get. And let me share with you some quick tips on how I did it. First, rule number one, go for the meeting. Always make sure that you make yourself present, make yourself well-dressed, well-prepared, and in the right mental frame to go for the meeting. Rule number two, state your purpose of the meeting. So when you have a purpose of the meeting, it becomes a lot more impactful, a lot more eventful, and both parties will feel the importance to commit their time. And rule number three, close the deal with a call to action. Now, a call to action simply could be a follow-up email, a follow-up call, even a follow-up meeting. So the call to action totally depends on your scenario. For example, if you're going to go on a date with someone, the call to action could be, let's go on a second date or let's go on a more advanced date. So the world is your oyster. So join me and watch how I use this video, how I use these techniques in my video. So let's go. Good evening, everybody. So, how many of us here have fallen in love before? Can I have a show of hands? Very nice. So, I think there are a couple of people over here who have not experienced that. But it's alright. You know, that's why I'm coming today to talk to you about the number game. Mm -hmm. So, before we go into that, now let's just reflect back on the fact of the on how people used to fall in love, say, 20, 30, 40 years ago versus today. Because 20, 30, 40 years ago, especially my parents or my grandparents, uh, it was much more traditional, it was much more personalized, and also it was very direct in the sense of it was more genuine in my own opinion. Now, you probably think in no way it's going to be more genuine as of today, but let me get to that in a while. So, back in the day, there was no such thing as WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, social media. Everything was done through writing letters. Everything was done through calling through, say, for example, the landline. And you can even imagine, like, for example, one family having one landline number. And imagine the risk of you calling someone who you like or that you want to date, and you're running the risk of your parents, your brothers, your siblings finding out, and even answering the call. That things don't happen today. So back then, there was a lot more challenges because you have to go through a lot of trust building and a lot more of a lot more relationship building in the sense that things become more tangible because you meet a person probably not as often as of today. Whereas in today's dating world, we are much more connected, we are much more filled with lots of choices because of the internet. And everyone here knows that there's a lot of dating apps and a lot of different social medias that connect the audience. So, why we're talking to people all these days generally is that the numbers game in today's era, and I can speak of it from my point of view, in the sense like we look at it as like um, a factor of how do we get a date or how do we land someone who we like is more to dating more people, going on more dates, and once you go out on more days, that's when you experience different kind of people, whether you can actually click with them or not. So we believe that what's important here is the best fit. 
So there's a theory called the law of averages. So has anyone here heard about it before? No. No? Oh, okay. So what it simply means in literal sense is that the higher the, the number of times you do a certain activity, the higher your probability of getting success. So let's take for example 10. So if you, for example, your ratio is right. so for example, if your ratio is 3 out of 10, so your average chances is 33%. That's your conversion rate. So what we're trying to say here is that if you're going out of 10 days, 3 days could probably go very well, 3 days could go mediocre, and 3 days could go really, really badly. So what this teaches us is to immediately shuffle and be like, alright, the 3 days that go that went badly, we discard them. The three days that went mediocrely well, we can maybe and uh, put more energy and time into it. And the three days that went really well, we know this is actually a good spot to carry on. And there could actually be something positive developing from this. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is something which is why I like to share on the law, um, as far as you mentioned about law of averages. It's because many people, especially the youth these days, and even the younger generation from my end as well, we do it because one is we are an abundant of choices. And we believe that because there's so many choices, it's very hard to choose. And the concept of like, you know, a parent finding the child, a certain couple, or certain like person who they love, is just not there anymore. So it's a very different way of dating in today's era. And another way of looking at it is that the law of averages, it also could be a hot lead, a warm lead, and a cold lead. So this is also a very sales related technique. So we can actually implement a concept of sales into the dating world. So the higher the number of clients I approach, the higher the number of meetings I go for, the more the number of sales I can close, hence, therefore, the more profits I can make on the company. So if you use the exact same logic into the dating world, then this is something that we could actually um, progress with. Of course, this is bound for criticism and whatnot. So before I carry on, um, could, I, like, could we get a share that would, would people think this is an idea that could work, that could not work? Just a shout out. Yeah, yeah I think it, it works. The more you try, the better the chances are. Alright, yes. And is there anyone here who thinks this idea is rubbish and atrocious and should never be implemented? Uh, no. Yes, you want me to good work, but I don't it just contradicts you when I say subconscious. <laughs> okay, that's actually very good. Yes, alright. So from what we see, we see a majority of rules neutral. Some people like the idea, some people find it challenging their conscience. So this is where conscience comes in. Because whenever you go for a meeting or a date, there's always two people to the story. There's always party A and party B. So when you go in, you're bringing your conscience to the line. And when the party B goes in, they're bringing their conscience to the line. So only when they both agree for that meeting, aka date, that's when a relationship or a friendship can start to develop. So when that happens, your conscience is clear because you're not cheating or misleading or fooling another party. And both of them are consciously going into it. So having said that, I hope I've resolved the conscious question. And if you would like to speak more about it, we can talk about it later. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the sense of the numbers game, this is actually a proven method because let me just give you a crash course in how to pick up a girl in, say, three, <laughs> three sentences. <laughs> right, this could be bound for criticism once again. So, let's think of it this way. I walk up to the bar, I see a pretty girl, and the first opening line will be a compliment. So, I'm like, hey, I think you look really beautiful, you have very nice earring. And she will be like, very please, or she could be thrown back, doesn't matter. The second course of action you should do is to tell her what's the purpose of that. So you tell her, hey, I'll actually like to get to know you better. I'd like to, you know, develop a friendship. So that takes the creepy aspect out of the whole situation. And this has actually proven multiple times. Because when someone is very genuine, very jovial, and very happy go lucky, and you get that fresh positive energy from you, that's when they're more comfortable to opening themselves up for conversation. And number three, always close the deal with a call to action. So how this works is tell them, Either be like, let's go for coffee right now, let's get a drink together, can I get your number, we can catch up for dinner sometime. So always go with the deal to get the sale. So, in the sales aspect, number one, go for a meeting, number two, state your purpose of the meeting, and number three, get a call to action. So, I'm trying to show out the similarities between the numbers game of the dating world and the sales world. And how this reflects to me is actually, this is how I met my ex previously. Because I was actually at a party, it was a Christmas party, and I actually had a lot of failures throughout the whole month, like going on random dates with random people, and it was not quite working out. So I told myself, I'm going to change my approach, I'm going to try something different this time. And when I met my ex, well, she's actually a friend of my cousin, uh, sorry, a cousin of my friend. And then when I met her during the Christmas party, she was actually quite like taken aback because she's never been approached in that particular manner. 
So I've proven to myself that this is a successful case study and it could actually work if anyone would like to join it. And if someone would like to have more ideas and more ways of implementing it into their life, right? regardless of whatever age you are, whatever gender you are, whatever background you come from, we can always chat later. So, ladies and gentlemen, my challenge for you for 2019 is that if you want to find true love, if you want to maintain true love, or if you think true love does not exist, you can always implement the numbers game to your own advantage. And with that, I conclude. Thank you. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching to the very end of this video. And if you feel you've enjoyed this video, go on and smash that like button below and also subscribe to the channel for more great content coming your way. And I also encourage all of you to share your thoughts in the comment section below. This is Joshan Devendran once again, and I'm more than happy to share with you my public speaking classes online. Go on and click the link below to find out more. And most importantly, see you in the next video.